Good morning, English 1102 students. Welcome to the third week of the summer 2015 semester. Um, we're moving right along. I hope that everybody realizes that tonight, on tonight, I mean Monday night, is the due date for those prose essays. I want to say a few words about the first drafts I'm receiving. Uh, and the main one I want to say is that if you waited until late last night to send me a first draft to look at, I'll try to get to that today. But the train has left the station for anybody that has not sent me a first draft. Um, you know, I don't just read these first drafts in five minutes and then give you a couple notes and be done with it. I actually take the time to go through it. I'll mark some grammatical errors. I'll give you, you know, a pretty long narrative about, you know, what, what you're doing well and what you're not doing well. Um, and if I get ten of those today, there is no way in heck I would ever be able to read them all today. So, um, like I said... Uh, those who waited till last night to submit them, I'll try to get to those. Um, but if you haven't submitted it yet, just go ahead and put it in the Dropbox and wait to receive a grade on it. All right. Now, about these essays. A couple things. Uh, one is the uh, planning sheets that I emailed you last week. Uh, they are also in a folder called Essay Planning on D2L. Those are designed to help you organize your thoughts. What I would do, and I think my email says this, but I'll go ahead and repeat it in video form, is that I put my thesis statement across the top. Ladies and gentlemen, you need a thesis statement in order to have a good essay. And if you look at the rubric for this uh, essay, you'll see that 10 points is, do you have a solid thesis statement or not? If I can't find a thesis statement, that's a zero right there. So make sure that uh, you have a thesis statement. The best way to do it is write it across the top. Um, a thesis statement is essentially one sentence and one sentence only that tells me, the reader, what to expect in your essay. And uh, I think my email actually touches on that a little bit and explains a little bit about what's going on there. Um, so one thing I did notice in these drafts is that some of these essays read more like a random collection of thoughts than they did an organized, coherent essay. So using those, these, those uh, planning sheets can help you with that. Now those planning sheets aren't the only way to plan an essay. Some people like to do something called clustering where they write a word out and draw a circle around it and then connect it to a new circle with a word written in it. Uh, some people do what's called free writing where they just basically belch everything onto the page and then they go in and pick out what is uh, good and uh, you know delete the rest. So those are a couple of other ways in which you can plan out an essay or write out an essay. Um, I like those planning sheets. I actually use those planning sheets. Uh, or my favorite way, and this is the way I mostly use, is I use index cards where I write things down on an index card and arrange them. And then I can spread them out on my dining room table and say, oh, that's good, that's good, ooh, that doesn't look right. Let me, let me switch these cards around. Oh, there we go. And uh, you can uh, uh, plan your essay out that way before you write it. So there's all kinds of ways to plan out. Those essay planning sheets are a tool. You're not required to use them, but I think that they can help you write better essays. All right, the works side entry. Uh, remember, 10% of your grade is, do you have any direct quotes in there and do you use those direct quotes effectively? Don't just stick a quote in there because Mr. Smith said that you need a quote because it'll be clear to me that you stuck a quote in only because I said you needed a quote. The quote should actually help you make your essay stronger. That's the purpose of direct quotes. Um, I would say on average about a direct quote per paragraph because most paragraphs, if you write a five paragraph essay here, each paragraph will uh, be a main point. So you need a main, you need a quote in there to support that main point and to help uh, to, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's, it's to uh, strengthen your points. It's just like going into uh, a courtroom and uh, the prosecutor says, but sir, you committed, you confessed to the crime and the defendant says, no, I did not. But if the uh, prosecutor can pull out video evidence in an interrogation room, and say, oh, you didn't, huh? Well, take a look at this. And the jury hears the exact words of the defendant confessing, then that's going to make the prosecutor's case stronger. Same thing here. Use direct quotes out of the stories to make your case stronger rather than summarizing what is going on in the story. And speaking of summary, I'm pleased to see that for the most part, nobody did story summaries. Remember, you're trying to answer questions. Remember, you're trying to analyze these stories. So don't, uh, don't give me a story summary. Oh, Rose Rimley opens up with everybody visiting Emily's house after she died. And then we go back to a flashback about uh, how she didn't pay the taxes and on and on. Uh, that, that would be the wrong way to write an essay. Try to do an analysis. 
Um, but getting back to my main point that I was making here is your 1101 teacher should have told you that anytime you have a direct quote in a paper that you need a work cited at the end of the paper in order to uh, tell the reader where that direct quote came from. Uh, I got emails this week saying, hey, do we need to have a work cited at the end? The answer is, oh, heck yes, you do. You definitely need to have a work cited at the end. Uh, you should always, anytime you have a direct quote in any paper, have a work cited at the end. Um, to make it easier for those of you that actually have this textbook, I have provided a work cited that you can uh, uh, copy and paste from and then change the author's name, unless you wrote about Rose Ramley, uh, change the author's name, change the name of the work, and then change page numbers. Now, one thing that somebody did in the first draft that uh, I guess I should have been more clear on is uh, when you change those names and those titles and those page numbers, please turn the font back to black. Uh, this uh, one student left it in red, and that's probably my fault. I didn't tell you to, you know, unmake it red and make it black again. Uh, please, whenever you do the, the copy and paste, go ahead and uh, change all the font to black rather than leaving the red font red. Uh, the only reason I made that font red was to tell you what you need to change. So that, that was the whole purpose of making that red. All right. So again, the due date tonight is the pros. Uh, tomorrow... Uh, is the beginning of the poetry block. I have got everything uploaded into that poetry folder now except for the video lectures. I will be working on the video lectures today. Um, the video lectures for the uh, poetry should be fairly short. I think the longest one will probably be the one where I talk about poetry itself and the poetic tools that are available to a poet. But I think as I talk about each poet, most of these poems are short enough except maybe for the Sylvia Plath poem that you can uh, actually uh, watch those videos. I, I think they're going to be like 10 minute videos maybe, maybe 15. Um, there will be a quiz, I haven't even started on it yet, but there will be a quiz that opens in the morning as well, uh, by in the morning, I mean Tuesday morning, to uh, uh, quiz you on whether you read the poems or not. Uh, I've been grading the, I've been staying on top of the pros quizzes. Uh, for the most part, many of you are doing the readings, it's pretty clear. Uh, some of you uh, maybe aren't understanding the readings. I'm not saying you didn't do the readings, but you didn't understand the readings as well as you should have. But, uh, so read this stuff closely and understand it is the point I'm trying to make. All right, so again, those will all be posted tomorrow. The last thing I want to say is that on Tuesday of this week, I will not be keeping office hours. I will actually be out of town. I'll be in Adel of all places. So on Tuesday of this week, uh, I won't be in my office at all, so stopping by to visit me or uh, actually calling me on the phone uh, will not work on Tuesday because you'll get an answering machine. If you really need to reach me, go ahead and send me an email. I won't be answering emails till late that night because where I'm going is going to take up all my time on that day. But uh, I'll be back on Wednesday and it'll be business as usual on Wednesday. So um, that's all I have for this week. If you have any other questions, feel free to email me and uh, keep in touch with me or come by my office. Uh, I will be in there uh, during the normal office hours, except on Tuesday, I'll be in there on the normal office hours. They're posted on my syllabus. And on that note, um, I look forward to uh, seeing all those prose essays and giving you feedback on them.